Hey shitheads! Amnesia The Dark Descent is one of the most famous horror games ever made, with it arguably kickstarting horror game let's plays. And well, Amnesia will go down in history as the video game famous for clips like this. Whoa, he's coming at me. The series itself is much bigger than just the game that PewDiePie used to play. Due to my experiences with girls and video game developers, I've developed something of my own. Trust issues. Luckily, Frictional Games, the developers behind the Amnesia series, have treated us quite well. The Dark Descent is an actual horror classic at this point, and Soma is an artistic sci-fi masterpiece. I started saying please and thank you to every voice-activated artificial intelligence I interact with after finishing Soma. And while Frictional Games haven't created a ratitude, not all of their games are the Blue Album either. Some are more like Van Weezer, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but you kinda just forget it exists. My point is, I've played Machine for Pigs twice, and I don't remember a single thing from that game. So I bought the newest entry in the series, The Bunker, and put it on my to review list on Steam so I could see where it falls into the series. And on that list, it sat for months. Until one night, I decided to open it. And something strange happened. Something rare. Something I haven't felt in years. I got scared. All I do is play horror games which has made me pretty numb to the whole genre. In my reviews, when I say something is scary or creepy, I usually mean the spooky stuff is done well. But I don't really get scared by horror games anymore. In the bunker, before I had even seen the monster, I was sweating and whipping my mouse around as I heard the monster traveling through the walls around me. Frantically closing doors as I saw its breath coming out of various holes in the wall, knowing it could crawl out at any moment. But just when I was about to see the monster, I closed the game. Three-ish years prior to this moment, Amnesia Rebirth had released. And I know some people like that game, but I am not one of those people. I got my complaints, but the main one for the sake of this video, the spooky monster design. Because it isn't spooky. Amnesia The Dark Descent was, and is still scary. And that's mostly because of this fucking freak. Now, you'd think that they would learn and improve on the monster designs as they continue making games. But for some reason while working on Rebirth, the design team said, You know what's scary? Skinny Pete from Breaking Bad. Zombies are great. I love zombies and I can't go a single video without mentioning Resident Evil. But monsters like zombies only work when used properly. Anyone can take a free model of a guy, make him pale and skinny, add a little bit of blood, and script him to chase you. That's why there's a billion shitty indie zombie games on Steam. Monsters like this, this, or this are way scarier than any zombie. Both of these are humanoid-like creatures. They both have two arms and two legs. But one works so much better in the amnesia formula. Because of my opinion on the previous amnesia game, going into the bunker, I assumed that the monster design was going to make or break the game for me. This seemed to be leading up to something great, and if I was going to review it, I knew that I needed to get my reaction on stream. What's going on, little dude? What's going on? Monster 
above us. What are you doing? You're pretty far away. Oh my God. Did he just leave? Is he is he out? Oh my god! I can't see him! Holy shit! And there you have it, sports fans. We have a code brown. The monster scared the living shit out of me. And what precedes this reveal is one of the best and scariest horror games I have ever played. You play as a French soldier in World War I who awakens in a bunker with amnesia. And something clearly isn't right. As you explore, you stumble across an injured soldier who explains there is a monster in the bunker, and it's killed everyone. Some soldiers did escape, but they sealed the exit on their way out, trapping us in here with it. The only hope to get out is to get dynamite from the arsenal and blow open the exit. Before we leave, the soldier asks us to take his gun, pick up some ammo from a nearby room, and shoot him. Do we actually kill him, chat? I uh, do we do we do it? What do we think? Okay. All right. We'll we'll put him out. We'll we'll do it. All right. Now knowing our main objective, we explore further into the bunker, which just by looking at it seems quite small for it to be basically where the entire game takes place. I mean, this is the entire map. But it actually works really well, with the bunker being basically a maze with puzzles that we need to solve in order to explore deeper into the bunker, some being optional, and some getting us closer to our escape. Let's look at the map again. This is the exit, and this is the arsenal, and in between them is about a minute walk. Which seems like a simple trip, but the bunker is in complete lockdown. Meaning, we'll have to go to other areas first to gain access to the arsenal. This game is completely different from every other game in the Amnesia series, with it being like a weird mix of alien isolation, dead space, and an old Resident Evil game. I mean, they have a, a safe room it with like a storage box a resident evil storage box also in this safe room is the only map of the bunker for navigation and a generator the monster isn't too fond of lights so if you want to run into him less you better have the generator fueled at all times if the generator goes out it's no worries because you do have a flashlight. The only issue is to turn on the flashlight, you have to do this. This obviously isn't the quietest way to turn on a flashlight, especially when you have to keep doing it, and it will bring the monster to your general direction. How sick is that? We've had plenty of horror games where your flashlight makes you more noticeable to enemies when it's on or can run out of battery, but I can't think of a single horror game that's a flashlight where every time you use it, it makes a noise that alerts the monster to your location. This makes moments where the generator does run out of fuel a lot more stressful. And while you could craft a torch or use a lighter, the torch doesn't last long at all, so I usually save the materials till I needed a torch to scare these stupid asshole rats away. And the lighter is just trash, you can't see shit with it. So I mostly found myself using the flashlight and venturing forth hoping I'd find fuel on the way and use it later unless I found fuel early on, and then I'd consider going back and refilling the generator before continuing. This game is full of decision making just like this, and I think it's what makes the game so great. If you find a locked door, it's probably time to search for a key or a code, right? I mean, that's what horror games have taught us. Well, 
you, you could do that. But, if the door's wooden, you could probably break it down by throwing a cement block at it a couple of times. But maybe you're not that fortunate to find one laying around. You could throw a grenade at it if you have one in your inventory. And if you don't have a grenade, one good shot from a shotgun should do it. But ammo is incredibly scarce, so maybe you want to save that for an encounter with the monster. You can also drag an explosive barrel over and shoot it with a revolver, but again, that will cost you a bullet and will take longer because those barrels are much heavier than the block of cement. All of these options work and all have advantages and disadvantages, including most of these options being loud as shit and almost guaranteeing some one-on-one -on -one time with the monster. So, is it worth it, or do you just look for the key? This becomes especially hard when it isn't a main objective, but a room with a label that gives you suspicions that there are some more rare items in it. And while I should have been planning out routes and doing supply runs, searching for key items, or doing anything to work towards my escape, I spent most of my time playing with a stuffed bunny that I found stashed away in a secret area. There we go. You ready? Ready, little guy? He shoots! Woohoo! Yeah! Oh, good job, little guy! <laughs> Chat requested me to name him, so... I named him Joffrey, and had him in my hand for basically the rest of my playthrough. Oh, and small little thing, I, I kinda got him permanently tattooed on my body, There, so there's, you know, there's that. Turns out Joffrey is pretty important lore-wise, and when you throw him at the monster, he will actually stop and pick it up before fleeing back into the walls. After this, you can find the little cutie hanging out in the monster's lair. This is also the first time in a hot minute that I actually felt interested in reading the notes and the journals left around to find out what happened and where the monster came from. And my curiosity only grew more when I explored deeper into the layers of the bunker and discovered levitating rocks and a room full of wandering ghost shadow people. The bunker is a new refreshing take right down to the almost tank-like controls of weaponry, like modern tank controls, which is really interesting, and made the moments with combat even more intense. This game is terrifying enough to run sweat down the foreheads of even the bravest gamers. And with a really fun speedrun plus built-in support for custom stories created by the community, all at a below triple A price, I basically have no reason to not recommend this game. Because of this, I'm giving it 9.5 Joffreys out of 10.